The first of these reinforcement schedules is called fixed ratio. And that is, you get a reward for a no number of times of the behavior. For example, if every time you turn in an assignment, that means you get 20 points, then you're getting rewarded every time. The second type is a fixed interval, which means a known amount of time passes before you get the next reward. For instance, here would be a paycheck. You get it every two weeks, you know it's coming. Now the problem with fixed ratios and fixed intervals is that people tend to get used to them. Uh, there's a thing called habituation, which is after a while, the person gets used to getting a certain reward. For example, if on a fixed interval system, you get a paycheck every two weeks, and you've gotten the same paycheck for the last 10 years, what are you gonna want? A bigger paycheck, probably. Unless you really love what you're doing. The third reinforcement schedule is called variable ratio, and that's a response after an unknown number of behavior tries. For example, gambling. And variable ratio is the most addictive of the schedules, because you never know when that next reward is coming. This is gambling. When someone pulls down that lever, and they don't know whether that reward's coming or not, so they pull down that lever again. And if the reward is good enough, this can be very addictive and dangerous. The fourth type is called variable interval, in which the animal or person does not know when that next reward is coming, which is a reward after an unknown amount of time. For example, someone gets five cents every time they plow a driveway, but they don't know when it's gonna snow. So it's a variable interval, which means they don't know when it's gonna snow, but when it does snow, they're going to get a five cent reward. And they get five cents. Now, the problems with behavioral conditioning, first is, on fixed ratio and fixed interval, after a while, they're going to want more. The problem with variable ratio and variable interval is that if the rewards happen too far apart, the person will get bored. For example, if that person pulling down that lever goes 100 times without getting a reward, they might just give up. What happens on a fixed ratio or fixed interval when someone doesn't get a reward? For example, for example what happens if they don't get a paycheck one week? Well, you can bet they're gonna get angry. It's usually an emotional response. For example, if you've been trained to put coins into a vending machine, and what happens, what do you feel when nothing drops out? It's probably going to be an anger response because you've been behaviorally trained to put those coins in and expect a reward. That's why on vending machines, they have those stickers that say, do not shake this machine, because they know that if you don't get something out there, there's probably going to be some kind of emotional reaction, which could end in violence based on frustration. Something else you want to be careful of when doing a behavioral reward schedule is that there's a trust in between the person giving the reward and the person taking the reward. And that trust cannot be compromised. So for example, you cannot give something and then take it back. The act of taking something back will remove that trust level. Another major problem with behaviorism is that it doesn't teach responsibility to the person getting the behavioral reward. In order for the behavioral reward to work, the child or animal must trust the person giving out the reward. But the child or animal doesn't have to exhibit strategies for self-control because the person giving the reward is in charge of all the control. And that's a big argument when it comes to elementary school classrooms. Yes, behaviorism works great for getting kids to behave and turn in their assignments and not cause a fuss. But if you take away that behavioral reward system, if that teacher goes away and in comes a substitute teacher who disrupts that behavioral reward system, all heck could break loose. And sometimes does. And you can tell a teacher who's used a behavioral reward system with their class by taking them out of that class and putting in another teacher who doesn't use the same system. Because if the class operates well, that means she probably wasn't using a behavioral reward system. This brings up another major problem with behavioral reward systems. If you reward someone for something they would do automatically anyway, it actually makes them not want to do it anymore if you take away the reward. For example, if you have kids coloring, and they're coloring because they want to, but then you go and introduce a behavioral reward system where you give them a candy for each page they color, and then you take away that candy again, that kid will stop coloring. Even though when you first began, that's all the kid wanted to do. Because there was an introduction of a behavioral reward system, that kid tied the behavior to the activity, and when the, when the reward stopped, so did that activity. So there are times when you should just leave things alone, certainly. So, behaviorism has its problems, but if you need something to work when nothing else will, behaviorism does work. It has the highest rates of success. 
but it doesn't necessarily teach strategies for self-control. So if you take away the behavioral reward system, the person might react worse than if it had ever been implemented at all. Now, there are ways of scaling down behaviorism to create the effect that this behavior would continue without it. And essentially, that would mean turning a fixed ratio every time into a fixed ratio every other time, and then into an interval ratio where they don't know when that reward is coming, and increasing that reward interval until the reward is no longer necessary. One other thing about behaviorism that we'll learn when we get into personality is that extroverted people and animals are much harder to train than introverted people or animals. People or animals who think about themselves and getting, and getting rewards for themselves are easier to train than people who think of other people first. 